I read somewhere that a poet once said everybody has 200 poems inside them just waiting to be written. If that's the case, then I'm overdue to write 195 of my poems. <laughs> I don't like to write poetry. It's nothing but words and images and rhythm and beauty and intensity. It's embarrassing to admit this in front of a group of poets, but um, I have a hard time listening to poetry. <laughs> I try to catch the words as they drift past, but they burst like soap bubbles one after the next, and I lose the plot. It reminds me of when I was a child fidgeting in the pew next to my mom as Reverend Kuntz spoke all those incomprehensible words from King James. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. A few days ago, I was sitting on a crowded Q train, scribbling in a notebook, and trying to write the novel I've been writing since 2011. There was a lady in a pink lace blouse, sitting to my left, reading a book. How to work miracles through creative metaphysics. She wore golden earrings. I peeked over her shoulder and read, to Oprah Winfrey, everyone's interpretation of God defines the ultimate secret. Oprah explains. Every morning, I try to touch the God light I believe is in all of us. Some people call it prayer and some call it meditation. I call it centering up. <laughs> On my right, a man was plugged into earphones and a mobile device. He was watching a movie on an impressively large screen that showed angry, dirty men shouting at one another. Angry, dirty men, lost in confusion, shouting. Excuse me, I said, tapping the earphone man on the wrist. His entire body jerked as he ripped off his earphones and shot me a vicious look of alarm. You look like you're enjoying that movie, I said. Is the story compelling? Are the characters clearly drawn? The man's gaze softened. Yes, he said. Oh. Yes. In fact, the protagonist has a well-defined goal, and yet there are challenges blocking the goal. <laughs> so there's enough at stake, I said. And not too much poetry, am I right? <laughs> Indeed. He plugged back into his device. The lady in the pink lace blouse her golden earrings flashing in the subway's fluorescent light, suddenly stood up. Poetry, she said. Poetry is an art form that people have used as a means of oral and literary expression for hundreds, nay, thousands of years. The human race uses the language of poetry for its aesthetic qualities in addition to its notional and semantic content. This is my stop. <laughs> she departed at Canal Street, a flash of pink squeezing through the press of people, and in stepped Oprah Winfrey. Is the seat taken? My o Oprah said, making a mad dash toward the empty seat on my left. It's all yours, I said. But isn't this a bit of a deus ex machina ending? I mean, really? Oprah Winfrey suddenly appears and resolves an unworkable plot? That's pretty random. Hey, this is your ending, not mine. Your prose ending, may I remind you. But listen, since you decided to go the whole deus ex machina route, couldn't you at least have put me in the golden chariot of the sun god Helios instead of on the Q train? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, I said. But I was in a hurry. 
They don't give us much time to wrap up things here at the Rhymes of the Ancient Mariner open mic. <laughs> Whatever, Oprah said. She pulled out her Kindle and opened the top selection in her book club's list of 21 books you must read before summer ends. A God in Every Stone by Camilla Shamsi, a sweeping story of love, empire, and rebellion set in Turkey, England, and British India during and after World War I. I went back to writing my novel. 